Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another adventure episode. This is going to be a fun one. We're going over to Hurrah Pass and Chicken Corners in Moab, Utah. Beautiful trail, scenic views. You're going to get those shelf roads where there's a lot of excitement because if you make a mistake, you fall off a cliff and die. How does that sound to you? Fun, right? Well, the good news is it's not super technical, but a little caveat I would not recommend this trail for a beginner driver that is behind the wheel of a stock all-wheel drive. This trail is rated a level 3, which is moderate four-wheel drive, by Trails Off-Road. So my rule of thumb is whatever the rating is, if you have an all-wheel drive, bump up that level to the next. So that means it would be difficult for all-wheel drive. And on this trail, that would hold true because there are some rough sections and... It's not getting to the end of Chicken Corners, that's the problem. It's returning back, because you now have to drive uphill. So anyways, let's get this adventure started, and I'm pleased to announce that I'll be driving behind a Subaru Forester and a Honda CRV, the RD1. I know there's been a few people that have been excited about these two vehicles in Moab on these trails. As you can see, this trail is a simple fire road. It's rated easy for a reason. There are some fun offshoots for people seeking technical terrain. That way, more advanced drivers could keep themselves entertained. So more on that at the later part of this video. And just like that, we are at the entrance to the 11 mile Chicken Corners Trail. This channel is all about using the activity of overlanding to open up a whole new world to you. This lifestyle has been profoundly life-changing. It's like vehicle-based backpacking. I was able to visit southeastern Utah and Moab, and I lived out of my rig for six days and had to view the stars every night. So if this interests you, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell. Anyways, here it is, Chicken Corners. Actually, we just passed a sign that said Hurrah Pass. So I think most people would think this is still Hurrah Pass. In a little bit, the difficulty is gonna go up. And if you're not ready, if you're a beginner driver, this could be problematic for you. Now remember what I said, you have to drive up and out of chicken corners. So you're gonna have to drive up these steps while it's steep going uphill. Got some dirt bikes coming up. You wanna reverse to get a good line. The thing I love about this trail are the expansive views. Being able to see so far out there. Actually, at some points, you can actually see the visitor center to Dead Horse Point.
As you can tell, that shelf road section was spectacular. Here is Sean getting a little run up because he does drive stick shift. He gets it. He gets it. Let's go clip in here. So, anyways, if we went to our right, then that would have been um, the, the venture cabin. Evan's taking the climbing stride. Wow, this feels like Mars or something. Been a Mars. Climb coming up. Now, when you guys uh, get out of that climb, I recommend sticking to the right. I think right there, to the left, get your driver tire right there, yeah, and it'll line, it'll line right up, and then your passenger tire will go up that. Yeah, you almost got it. Yeah. The cool thing about these Subarus is they have traction control, but also the four-speed automatic transmission. So he has a torque converter. It doesn't stall too easy. See, see that? It didn't stall like uh, over landing now. And I love their honesty about their experience with their Subaru Outback Wilderness. And this is the part where it stalled. The driver was on the gas and now has to back up and move forward with a little more momentum. So if you take a vehicle with a CVT on this trail, then just try to make sure that you kind of have a little bit of momentum going in. Don't use too much, otherwise you could break things. And just be safe. That was a fun obstacle. Not too hard, but definitely oh, fun. Oh, that's the way. Got some soft sand right here. A lot more deep sand like this where you guys are. If you wow. get to the top, there should be like a big pit of sand you have to drive through. Is there more after this? I think I might need to air down more. Copy that. Yeah, I'm down. Eddie, I think you're fine. Um, I went through at 18 PSI, but I crawled through that sand. There's probably rocks below the sand. I don't think this trail is known for being very sandy. Really glad to be in a car right now. Yeah, that obstacle caught me off surprise because I was still in two wheel drive. So I switched to four high and I wasn't getting much torque. So I ended up going down to four low. This is fun. Yeah, I've been in four low since the, uh, the top of the trail. All 
I'm just trying to improve Jeep's cafe standards, you know. <laughs> All right, convoy's caught up. So they're saying that this uh, there's a shelf right here that is a little, little scary, a little dark. Nice. Right. First time doing this stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's time to get footage of Cameron. We've got uh, three side-by-sides, side, four side-by-sides that just came up behind us. All right, 10-4, let them pass. This whole trip, I was waiting for the moment to use my balls. And that's actually the brake aid line lock system. Go for it, Evan. I'll get in bet behind you. I'm stopping to look side by side Ooh, it's time to use my ball lock. One second. Balls engaged. I think you're high centered. Ah, oh, there you go. All right, I finally used my ball lock. Got someone to film it for you. Oh, that was awesome. That was so effective at getting me through that. Evan, your uh, passenger rear is on a rock. See if you could, yeah, back up on it. There you go. You know what? If you back up more, if you take the right line, it's, it'll be easier. I'll give this one more shot and I'm back. Okay. Nice. Good job. I made some decent ground, so I'm going to stop up here, guys. <laughs> This signpost, if you go to the left, you will run into Lockhart Basin, which is, I think, a level 7 or 8 trail.
So be sure to look at all the rubber chickens attached to the back of So definitely, um, you know, the ground clearance I have for my three and a half inch tracks to lift kit uh, really comes in handy. So I'm gonna stop here and wait for the group. What's the significance of these rubber chickens? I think it has something to do with chicken corners. When you're the last one, hold up the fifth. I had the camera off for a while now. Um, it was just, you know, basic fire road. Smoother. This way. Done? That's easy. I'm not sure what the big deal was. I guess this scares some people. We were driving right on the edge of a cliff, about three feet away, on our way down from Hurrah Pass, so. This angle might look a little more dramatic, I guess. Awesome shot.
for the gram. Or for YouTube, actually. I don't really care so much about Instagram. Check this out. Probably should have brought hiking shoes. Got the dark glass. Or chinelas. Drone's flying overhead. Oh boy, if you slip, if you slip right here, it is game over, buddy. It is game over. Where, uh, this is where self-preservation kicks in for me and says, <laughs> I don't want to try to cross that right there. <laughs> Not in these slippers. You know, I just want to let you all know that you don't got to like bust out the stove and cook some crazy meal. You don't have to. I know I know you see it all the time on uh, YouTube, but it's not a requirement. Got a, got a cracker, multi-grain cracker, some cheese, this black forest ham, and then I got guacamole, and this is going to be my lunch. Oh, the cracker just broke. Multi-grain cracker. Cheese. Block for Sam. The guacamole. And lunch is served. scooch over here <laughs> this episode's getting on the longer side so it's time to wrap things up but there's one important thing i need to remind you about and that is now you gotta drive up and out of here by the way, I need to give Sean B. and the Honda CRV a shout out. It takes a lot of skill to off-road stick shift, especially when you don't have a low gear transfer case, or is it a gearbox? Anyways, there were times where I was parked a couple feet away from him on a steep hill, and he just got the thing moving without rolling back. I had a lot of confidence in his skills, and he did not disappoint. Yeah, that two foot drop is what hurt me. I do not have 24 inches of the ground clearance. Yeah, Evan, you're good. You're good. Okay, so you're gonna stay. No, no, don't go that way. Go passenger. More passenger. More passenger. Okay, you're about to drop on your on your driver's side. About an, in a foot, you drop. Keep going. Just take it slow. Okay, you're gonna keep going. You're gonna drop right about now. There you go. For the competitive off-roader, Chicken Corners is not going to be that interesting. So they do have these little offshoots. Inside, 
side by side. The left turn at the top there. Uh, the approach looked a little, a little funky. You know, on the rear dash cam. No, but it's got very little um, pressure on it. Oh, definitely. Maybe a little bit less brake. So I have a saying, I like to keep it real, not highlight real. Here, I'm still learning how to use the ball system or brake aid line lock system. And in a future episode, we go to the off-road park and we basically master our balls. So what I end up doing here is I just use a left foot braking technique and I bump up without using the system. Mr. Ed Z wasn't going to take any chances. He actually just locked his rear just for the heck of it, just to make sure he got up this as easy as possible. But from my experience, you don't need to do that in a four wheel drive. In a like a Toyota 4Runner SR5 with A track with no lockers, it would drive up this easily. Here's another example of me overthinking the system. Uh, it's best to engage the system and then just drive like normal without thinking about it. And it just does better. Here I start fiddling with balls. On an obstacle like this, I don't need it. I just have to left foot brake and bump up. So that does it for this episode. I enjoyed editing and reliving this moment. This was an awesome trip. I highly recommend this trail. Um, just, you know, if you're a beginner or you're not comfortable with more technical terrain in your all wheel drive, then um, I have a moral obligation to make sure that I don't understate trail difficulty. This trail was easy for me because I've been overlanding since. 2016, I started in a Subaru WRX driving stick shift, taking a bunch of dirt roads. If you drive a four wheel drive, I, I would actually say that, um, you know, this would probably be rated like a, a 2.5 or so, not quite a level three. However, the community consensus on trailsoffroad.com, which is a four wheel drive trail page, says the rating is spot on. On camera, 
things never look as bad. And well, like this obstacle looks a lot more flat on camera compared to in person. So that's another thing to keep in mind. What you could do is just kind of look at the Toyota Tacoma's 33 inch tires and just kind of measure it up to each of the steps. Thank you very much for watching. I hope, I know this was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed the episode. I cut out all the filler and I tried to try to give you some helpful information. So anyways, big shout out to Brayden Bartlett, the driver of the Tacoma. He organized this trip and it was memorable. Absolutely awesome. Oh, there's another thing. I, I've been meaning to warn you all about this. Check the temperatures before going. Right now, it's um, end of July. Temperatures are getting in the like mid to high 100s. When we went, it was only about 89 or so Fahrenheit. So make sure you check the temps. All right. See you on the next one. Have fun on your adventures.